Hey, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I bought in July. The first one we're going to start out with, I technically bought in June. I think I ended up receiving it towards the end, so I don't think it was in my last book haul. If it was, you just get to hear about it twice. Congratulations, I guess. The first book that I bought, I bought from Nightboat Books, which I will link in the description. Nightboat Books is a nonprofit organization, and according to their website, I'll just read right off of it, um, it, they seek to develop audiences for writers whose work resists convention and transcends boundaries. So this is for um, kind of radical and artistically interesting books. I ended up hearing about this book off of probably a listicle somewhere, um, but that book is The Black Condition featuring Narcissus by Jay Dodd. This is a poetry collection. I actually got a chance to read it this past month, and it was really good. I'm looking forward to finding more of J. Dodd's other poetry. This is autobiographical, and it incorporates multiple different styles of poetry. Some of these in here are songs. Um, there are also different techniques that they use. And even towards the end, they utilize um, pictures and different things like that. It definitely talks a lot about race, and it also talks about um, their experience as a trans femme person. There are also themes of family. One thing that weaves through a lot of these poems is um, really talking about self-confidence in different ways um, and kind of reliance on beauty and on desirability. So it's really good. I would definitely recommend this. So next, actually getting into the month of June, I started off the month with an order from Better World Books, which is another place that I would recommend buying from. For every book that you buy, they donate a book to a literacy organization. A lot of the money goes there as well. And bonus for you is that they do free shipping basically all the time. I don't think I've ever had to pay for shipping there. It started out as a hunt for Rita Mae Brown's memoir that I heard about when researching for a class that I'm teaching. And it ended with me buying Rita Mae Brown's memoir, Rita Will. And this was, ooh, published a little while ago, so it's not super recent. She published this in 1997. I'm not totally sure what she'll cover, if she's going to look at her activism or her writing, but I'm interested regardless. And when I bought this, I ended up sticking with the theme of sapphic women, lesbian literature, and I bought three other books. The other books that I got this shopping trip were The Miseducation of Cameron Post, which is a young adult book. I'm not super familiar with it, but I've seen a whole lot of people recommend it. It's kind of um, one of the newer, like classic, sapphic young adult books. So this is definitely on my list of young adult to read. I have a few other ones that kind of fit the um, kind of older young adult, which it's hard to classify like older young adult because young adult is a pretty new genre. Um, but this is kind of going in my mind along with um, Annie on my mind and Deliver Us from Evie, neither of which I've read. So I need to get to reading some sapphic books soon. The other two that I got are um, adult fiction, literary fiction, and those are Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson and Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe by Fanny Flagg. These were both published in the 80s. Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit goes through our main character's experience trying to reconcile her sexuality with religion. And then Fried Green Tomatoes focuses on two middle-aged women. One of the people is hitting sort of a slump in their life, and the other one is, it seems like, a little bit more mischievous in some ways. I'm not totally sure what happens, but according to the back of the book, as the past unfolds, the present for Evelyn and for us will never be quite the same again. So I'm not really sure what that means. I have a friend who says that this is like one of their favorite books, so I had to get it, had to see what it was about, and I was on a lesbian slash sapphic book kick and this just made sense to get. And then the final actually book buying that I did um, ended up happening in person. It was the first time since the beginning of all of this that I actually went out to a bookstore fully masked. Um, thankfully they were taking a lot of precautions, but I ended up probably overbuying, but that's fine. First I got 
Upright Women Wanted, which I absolutely adore. I read this before I bought it. Um, I ended up listening to the audiobook a few months back, and it was just so good. I need a whole series of this. Basically, the only thing that you need to know is that it is about anti-fascist queer librarians. That's all that I like to say because it is pretty small. I think it's technically a novella. If you watch my TBR, I said that I wanted to reread either this or The Seep, which is also amazing. Um, I think I'm going to end up rereading this because one of the book clubs that I follow on Twitter, I know it's one of the sapphic ones, I'll put a link in the description so that you know which one, but that book club is reading this, so I officially have a reason to reread it, and I am here for it, and I'm excited about it. I got another one of Sarah Gailey's books as well, American Hippo, which is um, actually technically two of their books. Um, it's The River of Teeth and The Taste of Morrow duology, as well as apparently some other stories. It says new stories, so I'm excited about that. I'll take any Sarah Gailey. I actually had to stop myself from buying their other two books. But this is another queer western. It's in an alternative history where hippos were used as primary livestock, which was apparently in consideration. So, like, instead of seeing cows everywhere, we would see hippos, which is wild. Um, but I'm super excited. I don't really know what to expect because that's all that I know about the book. That's all that I need to know about the book going in. Then we have The Seep, which I had the pleasure of reading this month, and it was everything. It completely blew my mind, and it's probably my favorite book that I've read all year. It's a sci-fi novel, which I don't really read a ton of sci-fi. Um, most of the sci-fi that I do read is graphic novels, but man, this was just really good. The whole premise of it is that there is alien technology on Earth. They could do a lot of different things, including allowing people to basically be reborn and raised again from scratch. The main character's wife decides to do this, um, and then she goes basically through this process of grieving and everything like that. There's a lot more that goes on, but I don't want to say too much about those other plot lines. But it is just amazing. Um, it's definitely character-driven, which I absolutely love. Um, it says so much about humanity and grief, and there's even themes about religion. It's excellent. Highly recommend it. Next, I have Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar, which is another one that I listened to on audiobook, um, I think in June, and I ended up falling in love with it. I wasn't too sure about this initially going in because the story, like, the main plot line didn't pull me in immediately, and I knew that there was a love triangle, and I don't really like love triangles, but the more I read, the more I completely fell in love with it, so I had to get myself a physical copy, and now I've got it. The final book that I got during this Barnes & Noble book run is March Book 2 by John Lewis. Um, I read book one a while ago. This is a graphic novel series uh, that is nonfiction. It's part memoir and part just general history about the civil rights movement. John Lewis did a whole lot within the civil rights movement, um, was a nonviolent activist, participated in sit-ins and different things like that. And I honestly don't think a lot of people understand what it meant to be a part of those sit-ins and doing these like nonviolent tactics um, because it was a lot more taxing than you would think. It actually might be less surprising within the past few months than it would have been before just because now there is just video after video of police officers reacting violently to a nonviolent protest. So that gives you kind of a piece of some of the things that they dealt with. With sit-ins, we have this image of the stoic people in black and white just sitting. But I mean, really, they dealt with people spitting on them, hitting them, all manner of just terrible things. So this is a hard read, but a very necessary read. I think that folks that have a hard time getting into nonfiction would do well with some nonfiction graphic novels. Um, but I've rambled way too much about that book. So next, um, I've got one more book. I did not actually buy this book. I was sent this. The author reached out to me because they saw one of the other books that I had posted before and thought that I would like their book, so they sent me a signed copy. And that is Queering the Stage by Jack Mia Shamblin. Here is the signature and the nice little note that they put when they sent it to me. So that's exciting. I had the joy of reading this this past month. 
Um, this is really interesting. It's a collection of plays and monologues, but they also include a lot of background for them. If you want to hear some of my thoughts as I was reading it, I'll put a link to the vlog that I did while I read this. Um, I hope to put out a video that looks a little bit more in-depth at it because I don't think that I'm that articulate in my vlogs. I will have also talked about this as well as the seep in my wrap-up video that will hopefully go out before this. I don't know what's going to happen. But if you're interested in theater, I would recommend this. Um, and if you're interested in activism through the arts, I will say though there is uh, there are a number of sexual themes throughout this, which is um, maybe expected. But if you're looking for something that's like super PG, this might not be for you. But I really enjoyed it, and I respect a lot of the things that they were trying to say through this art. And that is it for my July book haul. If you've read any of these, definitely let me know what you thought about them in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Bye!